in your M1 year, we covered a ton of organisms. And for many of these organisms, we covered the common infections that they cause. Now, one of the things with how we've laid things out and how I'm planning on laying things out throughout your M2 year is that now we're hitting um, organ systems that you didn't really have knowledge of when I initially taught you the organism. Um, so now we're going to be talking about groups of organisms that infect certain sites within the body. So right now you're in your kind of renal block. So we're gonna talk about urinary tract infections and we're gonna talk about a wide variety of organisms that are associated with urinary tract infections, both upper and lower. So when we think about urinary tract infections, and I'm going to largely leave, the, leave this to your pathophysiology um, instructors to explain, but basically urinary tract infections can show up in a variety of ways. They can be completely asymptomatic and only recognized by shedding of bacteria in the urine. Like if you're going in for a well check and they ask you for a urine sample and they find bacteria, you might be completely unaware of it. Um, more commonly though, urinary tract infections can result in kind of a low grade fever and frequent and urgent um, need for to urinate, as well as dysuria, basically painful urination. Um, in acute pyelonephritis, though, patients are typically more ill, right? They have shaking chills, temperature spikes, and a lot of pain in one or both flanks um, due to the organisms kind of getting into the interstitial tissue in one or both of the kidneys. So we really see kind of the whole gamut of symptoms when we think about urinary tract infections. So how does a urinary tract infection happen? Well, we've talked a lot about kind of normal um, bacterial passage. So we're coated in bacteria. Bacteria are everywhere. We are more bug than man, right? So bacteria are found in our mucosal sites. They're found on our skin. They're found in our gastrointestinal tract. And these are all places where they're allowed to be. And we've talked about the difference between an infection and almost like a metastasis of a bacteria from a place where it's tolerated to a place where it's not, okay? So um, E. coli lives in your gastrointestinal tract quite happily, right? That is a spot where we like it to be. It helps us with digestion. And as long as it's the right kind of E. coli, not a pathogenic E. coli, it's fine. However, E. coli in your urinary tract, no bueno, not going to be very helpful. So infection of the urinary, urinary tract occurs commonly from the entrance of the bacteria to the urethra and progresses upwards to the bladder and the kidneys. Women are more likely to be in, to experience um, urinary tracts, urinary tract infection than men, um, partially because the urethra is shorter and wider than in men. Um, and the periurethral area is colonized by bacteria originating in the vagina and the rectum. There is actually, though, an increase in urinary tract infections in men over the age of 50. And this is actually due to an increased incidence of prostatic obstruction. Um, and it's usually associated with um, urologic instrumentation and surgery. Um, and there are other predisposing factors that can lead to urinary tract infections. And that includes things like pregnancy, urethral dilation, tumors, um, anything that would obstruct the urine flow, some neurologic disorders, Disorders, which interfere with the ability to control bladder emptying and other mechanical factors like instrumentation or catheterization. So um, a patient that came into the hospital for something and was catheterized, they're at a higher likelihood of developing a urinary tract infection um, than their peers that are you know, outside of the hospital. Okay, so how are we going to diagnose a urinary tract infection? There's really only two things you need to look for. Can you find bacteria in the urine? And can you find white blood cells? Um, you see those two together, that's pretty much okay, you're dealing with a UTI. When urine from patients with urinary tracts or urinary tract infections, because we all have urinary tracts, is cultured, the number of bacteria is typically equal to or exceeds any from 10,000 
to 100,000 organisms per ml. A very small percentage of patients may be infected and yet have a colony count below that. And if that happens and it's suspected, you should do a repeat urine culture. Now, it's important to make sure your patient has done what's known as a clean catch. So if you go to the doctor and you are instructed to give a urine sample, you'll be given like a moist towelette with instructions to clean up, then let urine flow for a second or two, then catch it in the cup before finishing up, okay? The reason is we want to clean up the area, then we want to let some of the urine flow to get rid of any kind of commensal bacteria before catching some for sampling. This is known as a clean catch. Now, the reason for this is that the vast majority of urinary tract infections are caused by a single species, one organism. Rarely you'll see two types of bacteria that might be present, but for the most part, you see one organism. When a urine culture comes back containing three or more organisms, um, or even two, honestly, even if all of them are present in significant numbers, it's more indicative that your patient didn't perform a clean catch than it is of a multi-organism infection. So in this case, the correct course of action would be to, re to repeat the urine sample. So you need to call the patient back in, have them do another urine sample, and re-instruct them on the technique for a clean catch. Okay, major causes of UTI. Um, there's a whole bunch of organisms that cause UTIs, and some of them are really easily treated, and some are really complicated. Um, and if you don't treat them, they could progress to septicemia and all sorts of other ugly things. So a lot of these you've heard about before. In fact, I think all of them you've heard about before. So this is why we're not going into the... Um, the causes of UTI in such greater detail. What I will say is that E. coli is the most common cause of urinary tract infections. Um, for the most part, it's a rather uncomplicated, you go ahead and treat it with, you know, just give the patient antibiotics and the patient will be fine. We are seeing a higher incidence of antibiotic, antibiotic resistance E. coli, which can be dangerous. So um, it's important to treat the patient, and if the patient does not get better fairly soon on the antibiotics, maybe do some further testing to determine the susceptibility of um, the organism to the uh, antibiotics that you have the patient on. Um, other common causes are things like the Klebsiella species, Proteus, and Citrobacter. Um, the Enterococci, which we talked about um, in your vital fluids and gases block, um, Faecalis and Facium, um, both of those can be causes of UTI. And remember, they have kind of a high incidence of antibiotic resistance as well. Um, Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas can actually be a pretty common cause of UTI, um, particularly in hospital settings. Um, the Staphylococci, particularly Staphylococcus uh, saprophyticus. Now, it's important to note, you might see Carinobacterium in your urine samples. Normally, these are a contaminant, but you certainly want to rule that out. 